Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I want to show you a few examples of cutting back perennials because it's midsummer, it's getting really hot outside, and a lot of my perennials are looking really tired and worn out, and they need a little bit of help. So there are really three categories I want to talk to you about today. Deadheading, um, light shearing, where you just take a little bit off the plant, and then a hard cutback. So let me show you a few examples of deadheading first. So first of all, deadheading is simply removing spent blooms so that your plant can then send new energy into creating new flowers and new foliage rather than sending energy into producing seed. So the first example here is Gallardia. You can see that there's a lot of beautiful blooms still on these plants. There's a lot of new ones starting, but there is also a lot of old ones. So I just want to remove those old ones to make the plants look fresher. And to do that, all I have to do is go in and remove this spent bloom right at the main stem, just like that. All right, so next example. So these are Daisy May daisies that I planted in the garden last summer, and they are looking so great, doing really, really well. But you can see that there's a mixture of both really nice flowers and some that need to be removed. So just like with the Gallardia, I'm gonna go in and just find where it meets the main stem and cut it off, just like that. That way the plant can produce more flowers and bloom a lot longer. My third example is actually right below me. These are Fruit Punch Sweetie Pie Dianthus that I also planted last summer. They're doing really well, they bloomed beautifully. And I could actually take this one of two ways. This could either be in the deadhead category or the light shearing category, because you can see there are tons of spent blooms, but there are also quite a few buds as well. So if you wanted to take the time to go in and deadhead individual spent blooms out, you could absolutely do that. And you do it just the same way I've showed you before. You go in, you go down to the main stem and you take those spent blooms out. The other direction you could go is like I said, a light shearing, in which case you can kind of grab your plant into a bundle, do a light shearing, which is kind of just taking your plant halfway back. And that way you might sacrifice just a few little buds in there, but then the plant will have a ton of energy to produce a whole lot more blooms. So a few other examples of common perennials that fall into the deadheading category would be like Echinacea, Bee Balm, Columbine, Yarrow, Jacob's Ladder. And this is by no means a comprehensive guide because there are thousands of different perennials. I just thought I would show you what I'm dealing with in my garden right now. If you're not sure what to do with your plant, what kind of um, care it needs midsummer, I'd recommend that you ask somebody at your local garden center, look at the back of the plant tag that came with your plant. A lot of time there's lots of good information on that or Google it. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you about the second category of pruning, which is light shearing, which I kinda of just showed you right here, but I've got a couple of other examples. So by light shearing, I mean taking the plant back by about half. So this is a white wands Veronica. You can see how long these bloom stalks were. And what I wanna do is kinda of go in and take this plant back to about here. And that way I still leave all of the nice foliage. The foliage still looks really good. And wherever I cut, it's gonna encourage it to create new blooms. So it's really easy. I just kinda of gather it up in a bunch and take it down like that. And we're left with a plant that still looks nice. It's like a nice little tight sphere of healthy foliage. So this is another example of a perennial that needs to be sheared back lightly. This is a sedum kind of in my rock garden area. And you can see all of the spent blooms up here that need to be removed to make the plant look better. It's really easy, kind of the same idea. You grab a bunch of them and just take them down by about half. So you could actually use hedge trimmers for something like this and make the job a little bit quicker, but I prefer just to use my hand pruners because then I can easily remove the spent blooms like that instead of having to come in with a rake and possibly damage foliage later. All right, this one's all done and it looks so much better. A few other examples that fall into the light shearing category are plants like creeping phlox, rock crest, the veronica like I just showed you, um, really a lot of different types of rock garden plants, a lot of creeping type plants like birch hybrid campanula and the perennial alyssum. All right, so now I wanna move into the third category, which is cutting back your perennials hard. So this is a Centranthus or Jupiter's beard and you can see it's all bloomed out and looking pretty bad. It looked gorgeous earlier on this summer, huge bloom heads of bright pink. Um, but this is a perfect example of something that needs to be cut back hard. And what I mean by cutting back hard is cutting it all the way almost down to the ground. Um, you want to steer clear of any fresh foliage that's maybe in the center. I'm looking at the center of this plant and there's no fresh foliage yet. But when you cut back plants hard, it encourages a new round of compact, beautiful, healthy, fresh foliage. And oftentimes they will bloom again. So all you do is you take your pruners, you go down to the base of the plant as close as you can get to the ground and cut them down. back and it did leave a pretty good size hole even though these plants in just a few weeks time will push new foliage and they'll look beautiful again but that's something to consider when you get ready to do a new flower bed consider putting in things that don't all need to be cut back at the same time that way you're not left with huge holes 
I have not tackled this area yet since we moved into our house. Um, and I do think I'm gonna be adding in maybe a small evergreen of some kind and maybe some other flowering things that will add some interest this time of year when everything else has to be cut back. So the other two examples I wanted to show you in this category are actually in this same area. This is one right here, this is a hardy geranium. By this time of the year, they look kind of scraggly, really spent, they're not blooming anymore. So I'm just gonna do the very same thing, go through and cut them all the way back. last example I wanted to show you in this category. This is a salvia and this one could fall either in the cutback hard category or the light sharing because you can go in cut it back halfway. It'll produce really beautiful blooms uh, but I tend to like to cut this one back all the way. This is just personal preference because if you look at the structure of this plant it's already flopping over and I really don't want to kind of perpetuate that type of behavior. So I like to go in, cut it all the way back and then it'll form that nice, really tight, compact mound and it will still bloom. If you get to it early enough, sometime usually in July, cut it back, it still has time enough to bloom, at least in my zone five climate. So I'm just gonna do the same thing and cut it all the way down to the ground. All right, so this area is pretty much done other than I need to do a little bit more cleanup. But a few other perennials that fall into the cutback hard category would be things like catmint, uh, spiderwort, bleeding hearts, and artemisia. And there were a couple other things I wanted to go over now that I've got this area kind of cleaned out. I did mention that I do have a, like a really big blank area, so that is something to consider like I mentioned before. Um, it's also a really good time to side dress those perennials you cut back with a fertilizer to give them a little bit more energy. So like something like a flower tone or a plant tone is a really good one to use right now. It's also a good um, idea to address any watering issues, which I have in this area. This area is not watered by drip, it's watered by sprinkler, which makes it really hard when I've got super tall perennials in front because the water then doesn't reach the back as well. So it's a good time to run any drip lines that you might need to run. And it's a good time also to put a fresh layer of mulch down. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna rake this area up, get it a little bit more tidy and then I'm done. Hey. Got the area all cleaned up and I think we're going to make a second video out of running drip to this area and getting the plants fertilized and the area mulched because I don't want to make this one way too long. But I hope that this was helpful to you. I know it wasn't a comprehensive guide. I wasn't able to talk about all the perennials that might be out in your garden, but I hope it at least gives you a starting point that you might go out into your garden and kind of know what you're looking for. You can look at a plant and know, oh, that thing needs to kind of be cut back. I need to rejuvenate that whole plant. Or, you know, maybe I look at a plant and say, you know, there's some really nice blooms still on that. Maybe I just need to deadhead that one. But if nothing else, I hope that this serves as a really good reminder to you that now is the time to get out in your garden Take a look at your plants because a little bit of um, care right now will help prolong the life and the beauty of your plants. Even if they look like this for a couple of weeks, in just a couple of weeks, they'll be flushing back, they'll look, be looking beautiful, and I'll be able to enjoy them so much more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.